Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about the Seamarine Pico battery monitor. This is a beautiful little battery monitor. I'll just show a couple of pictures off to the side. This really drew me in and I've been curious about this system for a while. Today we're going to review it. Now this system is can be very simple or it can expand and be very complex. And so I decided to break this into a multi-video series. Today we're just gonna be setting it up as a battery monitor. So if you get the Pico One kit, it's gonna have a battery shunt and it's going to have the monitor. So this is what we're gonna set up today. And at its core, this is what this system can do. It can be a battery monitor to man uh, monitor your main battery bank now, what's cool about these shunts is they also have other inputs for temperature. They can take in resistance-based, uh, like water tank senders, and they can also take in voltage-based senders. So you can monitor the voltage of, say, your starter battery or some other battery bank. You can have a voltage-based propane sensor. Bring that in. You can have the uh, resistive tank senders that I show in a lot of my videos. We're gonna get into the details of how to set this up. As I said, in this video, we are gonna do the battery monitor, but there really are, as you can see, a lot of other modules and you can expand or contract this system to monitor whatever you wanna monitor. You can do additional uh, voltage and resistive base senders. We can add additional shunts if you wanna measure something like your alternator charger or a, a shore power charger that has a lot of current. We can add another shunt. And then they have these little modules that have uh, basically four little shunts and you can measure chargers or loads through that. So if you wanna know how much your solar power charger is bringing in or how much your refri refrigerator is consuming, you can run those through these little individual shunts. So. This system is very versatile, as you can tell. That's why I had to split it into a multi-video series so that we could just kind of focus today. But what we're gonna do is uh, zoom in in just a minute, and I'm gonna explain these different modules and uh, explain the different packages you can get. The Pico One versus the Pico. I was a little bit confused by that. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand the Seamarine ecosystem and be able to move forward or decide if this is appropriate for your project. But before we zoom in, if you're interested in your overall power system, not just your monitoring, I have a resource that you may be interested in called the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. It's got a discussion of the three major charging sources for vans and RVs, which are solar, shore, and alternator power. It's gonna talk about how they each have strengths, but they all each have weaknesses as well. But when you bring them together in a holistic power strategy, it's gonna make sure that you have a good charge source no matter where you go out on the road so you can enjoy what you're doing out there and you're not gonna be worried about running out of power. There's also a discussion on different battery types and the strengths and weaknesses of those. That's gonna help you narrow in on which battery is gonna be right for your situation. And then lastly, there is a really cool diagram that is essentially your whole system on one page. It's gonna show those three major charging sources at the top, solar, shore, and alternator power. And it's gonna show how they connect through the system, charge your batteries, and then come out at your end devices such as your microwave or your phone charger. For instance, how does the alternator power get through the system and come out and charge your phone? So it's a really cool diagram that I think you'll find useful. To get your own copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet, all you have to do is click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. All right, with that, let's zoom in and take a closer look at the Seamarine system. Now, what I'd like to do is introduce the various kits that you can get. And uh, as we show the kits, we're going to zoom in on various components and talk about those. Now, with the Pico battery monitor screen itself, uh, there's not a whole lot to show you yet other than the casing. I've got the black. You can also get silver. And I got the bezel, which is going to sit in front of your uh, paneling. They also have the panel mount which is going to sit down in it and uh, the panel mount is going to have kind of a lip that, that sits down in that paneling. But uh, either way it is a beautiful finish for the Pico monitor itself. Now with the Pico One kit it's like the Pico plus one item. That one item is going to be a 300 amp shunt. 
This is the SC303. So you have the shunt to measure the current going in and out of your battery bank, but you also have these additional inputs here. So I'll go ahead and zoom in and we'll take a closer look. So as you can see here, we have the communication ports. These are going to daisy chain all of your modules like this together. With the Pico 1 kit, you really only have the screen, so that's less applicable. But you're gonna have these communication data ports on every module, so keep that in mind. And then we have additional inputs here. So you can see the U symbol, that's the international symbol for voltage. So these are gonna be the uh, starter battery voltage, the main battery bank voltage, or any voltage-based sensor. I'll show you that in just a second. And then on this side, we have the resistive inputs. So those could be uh, temperature sensors, they could be resistive tank uh, level senders. And then you have the white input here. Let me show you the little temperature sensor that's gonna come with it. So that's gonna plug into that white input there. And uh, this could be the temperature sensor in your power system area or just the ambient room temperature, whatever you want. And that plugs into that white port there. So that is the Pico One kit. Now 300 amps for the shunt at 12 volts, that's going to do 3,600 watts. At 24 volts, that's 7,200 watts. Uh, you can also do a 48 volt system. They ask you to run this on the negative side. With these shunts from Seamarine, you can run their shunts on the positive side of your circuit up to 35 volts. Anything over 35 volts, they ask you to run the negative side uh, through the shunt. So hopefully that makes sense. But let's look at the next kit, which is going to be the Pico Standard. It's gonna have one extra item. So everything from Pico One plus this extra item. Let me zoom in on this and we'll take a closer look. All right, so as you can see, it's the ST107. And if the Pico One kit doesn't give you enough inputs, this is gonna give you a lot more inputs. So we have three more voltage-based inputs and four more resistance-based inputs. And we're also gonna have an alarm relay there. So that relay can be set off, let's say the battery bank gets down to 20% state of charge. You wanna set off this relay to start the engine or turn on a red light or a buzzer. Um, you can use this programmable relay to do all sorts of things um, based on all sorts of conditions um, that you set up in the programming. So that is the Pico standard kit. Now I have to mention one other thing that you're gonna get in these larger kits is this splitter. So we'll push all this forward. The splitter is going to network the data cables. Each of these modules is gonna come with a data cable and they're all going to come back to the splitter. You can see the little input ports there. Uh, this is going to feed all that data to the screen. You can see the port on the back of the screen is going to match up with that. And uh, we also have the power cable. So we're gonna connect this to positive and negative. That's gonna power up the splitter. The splitter is going to power up all of your modules. So that is the Pico standard kit. And then lastly, we have the Pico blue kit. So this is the most expansive of the standard kits. You're gonna have everything from Pico standard, uh, but you're going to have the SCQ25 is listed, so this is a module that has little miniature shunts to measure chargers and loads. So as I said before, you could measure your solar charger here, you could measure your refrigerator here, you could measure how much power your lights are consuming here. Uh, any particular chargers and loads, of course you could get multiples of this if you want to expand that and measure. You can measure as many things as you'd like in your system. Now they did send me the SCQ50 in the Pico Blue kit. Uh, the 20, SCQ25 was listed, but for some reason they sent me this, which I was happy with because each item can be up to 50 amps instead of 25. Now the other difference with the Pico Blue kit is the shunt is going to be a little bit higher capacity. It's going to be a 500 amp shunt instead of a 300 amp. And uh, one thing I want to show you, let me move this out of the way. You can see there's um, pretty much no difference between these shunts. You have the same inputs and everything, but there's just less metal between the, the posts. Um, 
Now I will put at the bottom of the screen the capacities of each shunt. The 300 amp shunt can do 12, 24, or 48 volt systems, really anything up to 75 volts. Um, that is the same for the 500 amp shunt, um, but obviously the amount of power you can send through there is different. The 300 amp shunt is going to do up to 3600 watts at 12 volts. The 500 is going to do up to 6000 watts at 12 volts. And uh, just you would multiply those numbers out if you have a 24 volt or 48 volt system. But that is the Pico Blue system. And uh, one other thing I want to mention on this particular module, you have an additional alarm relay in addition to the ST107 relay. You have an extra relay there that you can use to uh, set off and do additional functions. Now as far as the inputs for here or on the ST107, we've got all these voltage and resistance based inputs, but uh, let's talk about some of the things that can go in there. So a resistive tank sender would be like this. This is from KUS and the resistance that gets reported back changes as the floater moves with the fluid level. So this could be for water, wastewater, or fuel. Uh, now when it comes to a voltage based sensor, here's one from Safari. I'll go ahead and turn it so you can see the label on an Australian company that makes a lot of voltage based sensors. This one is for propane or LPG and uh, it's just going to uh, hop on to the bottom of your propane tank if it's steel. They also make these that adhere to your plastic tanks, but that is a voltage based sensor. This is a resistive based sensor. And as far as the other things that can go into, let's say one of these shunts, they are going to come with a, uh, a positive and negative that's made to connect to your battery to report your battery voltage there. So you'll measure the current through the shunt and that's pretty much the flow, but uh, the voltage is going to come in here. So you can measure the, the main battery bank voltage with this cord and you can make a second cord that's going to measure potentially your starter battery voltage or something like that. And they don't have to be the same voltage. One could be 12 volt, one could be 24 volt. Um, you can mix those and they will all get reported I wanted to show you one additional module. This is the SCQ25T. So as you can see, it's got the little 25 amp shunts as well as those inputs that we had on the ST107. So uh, you can see the inputs are the same four resistive inputs, three voltage inputs, and then the relay is over on the other side there. We've got that additional alarm relay. This module is available as a standalone module. Uh, either on Amazon or you can go to cmarine.net and see all of their little modules. Another one they have is the inclinometer. It's going to take the uh, pitch and roll, I guess you would call it, of your vehicle and tell you how level it is if you're trying to level out your vehicle. And then the screen itself is going to have, you can see the little white dot, that is a barometer or an air pressure sensor and uh, it's going to report the air pressure as well. So there's quite a lot you can do with the C-Marine, but uh, at this point, let's go ahead and set it up on our board as a battery monitor and take a look.
All right, we've got the moment of truth. We are ready to turn on the Pico. We just need to turn on our battery switch. Now, as far as the setup, you can see I have the one shunt, that's the 500 amp shunt, and I plugged in a voltage input to voltage input one to pick up the battery voltage. And I've also connected the included temperature sensor into the NTC port. So we are going to report the current through the shunt as well as the battery voltage, as well as that battery temperature. And as you'll see on the Pico, they're all going to show up and we will be able to assign those parameters or those inputs to the battery. I'll show you how to set that up in just a second. But step number one when we get started is you wanna upgrade the Pico to the latest firmware because whatever firmware was put on there at the factory may not be the latest. We want to uh, make sure we have the latest and then we're gonna go in and do the rest of the programming. The way we're going to upgrade the firmware is we're going to use the Seamarine app. So you wanna get that from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And uh, it's literally called Seamarine app. We're gonna be able to upgrade the firmware. We're also going to be able to use the app to connect over Wi-Fi. And uh, you can look in on, on the Seamarine Pico. You can do a little bit of the programming. But uh, the first thing out of the gate is gonna to be to upgrade that firmware. So what we're gonna do is uh, let's go ahead and turn it on. And um, I want you to notice the first thing that pops up is this QR code and that is going to be kind of a hint as to what we need to do first, which is we're going to connect to the Seamarine's Wi-Fi network. So it's putting out a little Wi-Fi signal and your phone should be able to pick that up and it's gonna be named after your serial number. So mine's Pico 84 something, based on my serial number for this particular unit. But we need a Wi-Fi password to actually get onto that network. And so let me, zoom in here and I'm going to show you where to find that password in the Pico. Once we get on the network, we are going to open our Seamarine app and we're going to immediately upgrade the firmware. Now the firmware process, there are two, you get this little card, it has the firmware upgrade instructions here and then it has the emergency firmware upgrade. I'm going to use the emergency method. I just found it very easy to use. And it does say if the regular firmware process doesn't work, you know, try the emergency process. Um, so one way or another, you can upgrade the firmware. What you're going to do, I'm just gonna show you while we're zoomed out. Don't worry, I'm gonna zoom in here in just a second. But uh, to do the emergency process, you're gonna turn the power off to the Seamarine. It doesn't have to be a big switch like that, but for me, that's the easiest way to kill the power. When you turn this on, it's gonna say Seamarine on the screen, and we're gonna hit the left arrow key, and uh, that is going to go into the emergency firmware upgrade mode. So just to give you a quick overview of what I'm doing here, so we're gonna turn it on, it's gonna initialize, we're gonna hit that left arrow key immediately, and it's gonna go into the emergency mode. So let's zoom in, and I'll give you a little bit closer look at that. So here we are at the emergency upgrade screen, but we need to go back one step and we need to get the Wi-Fi password for the Pico so our smartphone can connect to it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the unit back off. We're gonna turn it back on normally, let it boot up normally, and I'm gonna click on the circle button here to go into the settings. We're gonna go down to where it says Wi-Fi, click the circle button, we're gonna go down, you can see SSID Pico 8429. So that's the network name that we're gonna find on the smartphone to connect to, but we need to grab the password real quick. So we're gonna go all the way to the bottom where it says Wi-Fi reset. If we click the circle button, it's gonna show the current password of Pico 7183. So we're gonna write that down and then grab the smartphone and connect to the Pico's network and input that password and we'll be able to do our firmware upgrade. All right, so we are ready to upgrade the firmware, but first we need to connect these two over that Wi-Fi network. So I'm gonna click on settings and I'm gonna go into my Wi-Fi on my phone. You can see my normal network there and we're gonna see if we can find the Pico in this list. There it is, Pico 8429. So it's picking up the signal from the Pico right now. 
Now we need to enter that password. For me, it's that Pico 7183. We're gonna click join. You can see it load up here at the top. So that is successful. So now that we're connected, what we need to do is put this in the emergency upgrade mode and we can open the app and do our firmware upgrade. So I'm gonna turn it back off. We're gonna turn it back on. We're gonna hit that left button. It's gonna take it into the emergency update mode. It may detect that it's connected via Wi-Fi to the smartphone. There it is, so it's uh, wait for connection. We're going to open the app and it's going to immediately show us a firmware upgrade button. We're gonna click that. It's gonna tell us the latest version and the current version. We're gonna click upgrade and uh, this is pretty cool. It's going to do the full upgrade process. So this is downloading from the cell towers and then it's transporting that data over the Wi-Fi connection. And if it's successful, then it will sync up with the Pico and show kind of the latest data. Okay, there it goes. So it's showing what it knows from the Pico, which is not much because we haven't programmed it yet. Now, we're gonna zoom in on just the phone. It's a little bit easier. If we hit the gear icon there, we can go in and set up our shunt and our voltage sensor and all of that stuff. Um, we're going to zoom in on the phone and uh, I'll show you how to set that up. All right, so I've zoomed in just about as far as I can. We're gonna hit this gear icon on the top right and we need to add our first device. So we're gonna click on devices and we're gonna click on add new device. Now you can see some of the sensors that are coming in. The Pico has an internal voltmeter and then this is our shunt and all the inputs that are on the shunt. So voltage inputs, resistance inputs. Um, this is gonna change based on what you plug in. So I'm not gonna to get too deep into all this, but all that's gonna show up we're gonna click add new device and we need to add a battery. So that's that first option there. We're gonna click add battery. We're gonna associate it with that SC503 shunt. So we're gonna say, sounds good. Click next. The battery we can rename. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as battery one. The type we can change to lithium. The shunts, it's gonna list that SC503. Uh, we can add additional shunts that are associated with this battery and we can add together the current running through multiple shunts and associate them with this one battery or battery bank. Uh, but we are good to go for now on that. Let's click the back button. Okay. The voltmeter is going to be the input number one on that shunt. So you can see SC5031, SC5032. That's part of the serial number there. As these inputs get assigned to things like a battery, they are going to go away and they will no longer show up in the list. So any voltage sensors that are currently available and that are unassigned are showing up here. So I'm gonna click on voltage sensor number one there. That's gonna bring in our battery voltage. Now the temperature sensor is set up in the shunt, but we need to create that as a sensor because if we click on this, we don't have any options. So we'll set that up in just a second. Let's move on. So we have capacity uh, C divided by five, C10 and C20. So these are different burn rates basically for the battery. Um, for lithium, it doesn't really apply. You're supposed to enter the data that you have. The typical measurement is a 20 hour discharge. So that would be C over 20. So we are gonna put our battery bank capacity there. So whether you're measuring one battery or a whole bank of batteries linked together, you wanna to put the overall capacity. So for me, that is 160 amp hours. We'll go ahead and leave the five and the 10 unset. We'll set it for 20. 
and then on the advanced settings. So I can tell you, you want to check out the manual for the Pico, uh, page 45, 46 for these advanced settings. I'm going to explain it the best I can, but uh, here we are in the advanced settings. So uh, the TTG averaging is time to go. So it's going to calculate how much time left you have at your current uh, burn rate going through your battery bank. And uh, you can change how uh, short or long you want it to average out those numbers and those calculations. We're going to leave it as medium. And a lot of these numbers, you can just leave them as the default. The TTG SOC time to go state of charge is uh, what are we measuring to? So uh, we are running the battery down to 20% and we're calling that the discharge floor. That's as low as we're going to take that battery. So all of our calculations will be based on 20% being the maximum that we're going to run it down or down to 20%. CEF is charge efficiency for lithium. We could leave that at 100%. I'm going to put it at 99%. This is going to depend on your uh, battery manufacturer. Uh, display type standard, we'll go ahead and leave that. The battery full voltage. So if you have a 12 volt battery, this is a factor. So I have a 12 volt battery, but um, the 14.2 volts is the uh, voltage at which it's full. So this would be like your bulk charge voltage. So for me, that's 14.2. So we're going to take 14.2, divide by your system voltage, which is 12 in my case. And uh, let's see what that number is. It's um, 1.1833. So I don't think it's going to take all those decimals, but we're going to put them in there. Yeah, 1.18 is the best we can do. Um, so that basically tells it um, when it hits this voltage, it's full, and when it hits this current, it's full. So this would be what you would call a tail current. Um, so 1% is really 1% of the battery capacity. I have 160 amp hours. That would be 1.6 amps. When the, it hits this voltage and it gets down to 1%, 1.6 amps going into the battery, uh, we have the uh, battery full time of five minutes. When it hits those conditions for five minutes, it resets to 100%. So hopefully that all made sense. See page 45, 46 of the Pico manual. We're going to hit done. And now you can see battery one there at the top. So let us go back out to the main screen. And uh, it's not going to immediately populate. Basically, this algorithm learns over time. It's going to take the voltage, the current, and the uh, temperature of the battery. And it's actually going to learn. It's going to get smarter over time as you charge and discharge the battery. So don't be scared if it doesn't immediately show data. But um, that is how you're going to set that up with a shunt and a voltmeter. Let's bring in that temperature sensor, actually. So we'll go back to devices. We're going to add a new device. We're going to add a temperature sensor. So these are the only inputs that are available. Again, so the hardware is uh, hardwired to the Pico with that data cable. And so it's bringing these in. And it's saying, which one of these are you going to turn into your temperature sensor? So it's going to be the SC503 input 3. And uh, we're going to click on that, hit next. We'll call it temperature sensor one. This would be appropriate to call, you know, battery bank temperature or something like that. Uh, the type, it's NTC 10K. So this is kilo ohms. So 10,000 uh, ohms of resistor, uh, resistance. And that is just the manufacturer of that thermistor that temperature probe, it's a 10K probe. So this is the sensor uh, display priority. This is how, how high you want it to show on the Pico as you go through the different screens. Uh, we're gonna say not set because we're gonna tie this to the battery. And then you're gonna set the minimum, uh, minimum and maximum temperature range. 
and then you can do a calibration which is an offset so uh, if you say this this sensor we're in degrees Fahrenheit so we're gonna say uh, 30 Fahrenheit ah let's see this took me a little bit of setup so it's actually going to read in Celsius so 0 Celsius is about 30 Fahrenheit um, it's a little bit squirrely here, but I was able to get the temperature sensor to show up how I needed it. We're going to do 80 Celsius on the high end, so 180 Fahrenheit. Calibration, we're going to leave it alone. Uh, source, you can kind of tell it where this thermometer is. We'll say inside. Um, and then on battery one, we're going to go back into it. Temperature sensor is temperature sensor one. So before it said not set, there was nothing available. Now we have one available because we set it up. So we're going to hit that one. We're going to click save. And now battery one is associated with temperature sensor one. We will go back. We're going to give that a little bit of time to set up. But let me show you, I'm going to click on the gear icon. Let me show you a couple of other things. So on alarms, we can add alarms for absolutely anything. Battery state of charge, uh, if the temperature gets too low on a certain temperature probe, uh, if the voltage goes somewhere we don't want it to go, we can set an alarm for anything. And uh, you can set up a relay to go off when that alarm goes off, or you can just have an audible alarm. Um, you can have the Pico monitor beep at you. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do with the alarms and uh, device settings. You can set the date and time. You can handle the firmware upgrades. Uh, you can do backups of your data. Um, and you can actually save a, uh, a backup and go back in time if you don't like a certain firmware upgrade. Um, the general you can set the, the uh, units and the language. So I set mine to all US uh, units like the US gallons, Fahrenheit, things like that. But uh, basically that is the Seamarine app. I'm not gonna go crazy into every setting because this video would be an hour long. But uh, let me go back to the Pico itself all right, so here we are back at the Pico, and you can see our battery has shown up. It's showing a 75% state of charge. We've got the time and date, our time to go. Uh, the little down arrow is showing that the battery is discharging. We've got over 10 days to go because the only thing running is this Pico itself. Uh, we also have the uh, barometric pressure right there and then we can pan through the different screens so this is more details on the battery we've got current and uh, voltage of the battery the 0.05 amps is actually the consumption of the pico itself uh, you can see the name of the battery battery one there we've got our only temperature sensor at 73.2 degrees fahrenheit which is pretty accurate our barometric graph and we're back to the main screen. So this main screen is highly programmable. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is this unit will actually turn itself off. I have it set to uh, turn off after five minutes and the Wi-Fi with the phone will stop working. If you figure out like you can't seem to pull up the Pico, it's not available on your Wi-Fi list, it's because it is set to turn off after a few minutes. So as you're doing the programming, you may want to uh, set it to stay on for longer so that it communicates with your smartphone. That's my video on the Seamarine Pico battery monitor, or at least video one. I think we've covered enough in this particular video. I'm really excited about this monitor. I think it's beautiful and I love how you can expand the modules and measure all sorts of things. We're going to get into that in videos two and possibly three in this series and uh, I'm going to hook up some of the other modules and bring in more temperature sensors and we're going to measure some charges and lows with uh, this 
combo shunt. But um, I really appreciate you watching this far. Again, if you want more help on not just your monitoring, but your overall power system, you gotta grab a copy of the Ultimate Van Power Cheat Sheet. Just click that link below or go to rosslukeman.com slash vanpower. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.